Is the novel coronavirus 2019 threat a true global health pandemic? Or is the real threat the panic that occurs when governments and citizens react to the supposed health threat presented by media outlets worldwide? Which threat is worse? And could both be real threats? What is known about COVID-19? And where does the line of unknown begin? We know that this particular virus came from a biolab in Wuhan, China, not a naturally occurring viral strain that mutated at a seafood market, but it's still unclear how it escaped from the high-level biolab. Did it escape on accident? By an infected biolab worker? Or did someone release it in Wuhan on purpose? Either an angry individual or a tyrannical government? The new coronavirus is said to behave differently from others. Yet, it's also said to behave the same. We know this virus is contagious and was spread quickly throughout the world due to our international connectiveness. But the features, symptoms, and even the genetic composition of COVID-19 remain hazy and difficult to diagnose due to the striking similarities to other viral strains. In earnest, a runny nose, sore throat, cough, and fever could be any number of viruses or respiratory infections. But during this time of heightened global awareness, these characteristics are all attributed to the now infamous coronavirus 2019. While seizures, coughing up of blood, sudden collapsing, and drowning by fluid-filled lungs remain the seldom seen symptoms that terrify the public to the potential horrors of the virus. So we know the novel coronavirus 2019 is real, as in a real living biological entity, but is it really that bad? Undoubtedly, any person killed by this virus would make it bad. However, have all the deaths attributed to COVID-19 been accurately affirmed or just assumed during a time of heightened corona awareness? With a lack of testing tools, we don't really know how many people have the genetic mark of this virus in their body. So how do we know how deadly it truly is? Are we to take the doctor's orders at their word, take the panic pill, and believe believe the death count by corona is ticking higher and higher every day? If COVID-19 is so deadly, why did the World Health Organization drag their feet in calling the outbreak a global health pandemic? Again, how bad can it be? Governments across the globe have used the coronavirus pandemic as an excuse to create new rules and regulations for their own populations, flexing the muscles of health institutions and their bureaucracy's ability to control and dictate public policy to their people. Even in the land of the free, American mayors and governors have mandated the closure of certain businesses and taken fascist-like control over others, while the federal government has been using power powers granted to the CDC and National Institute of Health by President Obama to create rules that restrict movements, association, and enforce quarantines, violating the God-given rights we enjoy in the United States on a daily basis. Is this a mad power grab under the guise of a health pandemic? Or are governments genuinely trying to help protect their own people? As an American, how much of your personal freedom would you sacrifice to accomplish accommodate the suggestive actions recommended by global or national health organizations. What's more important, personal liberty or the proclaimed common good? We know that any crisis is going to be used by globalist forces to further consolidate power and control worldwide. But is the COVID-19 crisis pre-planned by hidden hands or just highly convenient for their purposes? Whether or not this event was planned, planned to be a real crisis, we know that the panic is real and the survival prepping is indicative of that, as is the confused gathering of goods as citizens hoard hand sanitizer, water, and toilet paper, the last of which would be useless without a cache of long-lasting storable food. 
Twisted all around and tightened into a tense panic by a discord of news media and scientific reports, people have been more willing to forfeit freedoms of movement and association by socially distancing themselves from one another, and they have been encouraged to remain in an isolated state that may very well further fuel their panic and paranoia about the coronavirus itself. Even though an overwhelming majority of the population doesn't know a single person who has tested positive, either because of a lack of testing tools or because the virus is mostly hype. So which is it? A global pandemic of biblical proportions? Or a government-fueled panic for a global power grab? With God-given free will and the power to discern truth from deceit, only you, a thinking individual, can decide for yourself. This is Brian Wilson with InfoWars.com. cover the waterfront of the attack on our hormones with the estrogen mimickers against men and women to talk about some of the big medical developments uh, in the studies that are now on record of nutraceuticals that the elite are taking that they've made sure are so expensive it's hard for the general public to get them that are growing the telomeres in the DNA, that are spurring mitochondrial growth and keeping cells alive, that are causing nerve regeneration. This is stuff you're allowed to say because it's patented and been certified because it's now supplements going into the whole nutraceutical realm. This will not be an infomercial for the next hour, okay. except for about five minutes of it. DNA.